Good morning, family. My name is Kaden, and this is your Ricky for today. Sometimes you could be in such a hurry to get to where other people are, then realize it's not where you want it to be. Pastor Ricky G. Rush. Some people say the grass is always greener on the other side. No, guys, I'm okay. I can stay over here. I'm good. Guys, I'm fine. I'm just reading the Rickies. They do look like they're having a lot of fun over there. I mean, yeah, guys, I'm coming. Some people say that the grass is always greener on the other side. As you can see, that's not true. So you don't have to chase other people to be where they are. Be happy where God has planted you. And God will bless you beyond your wildest dreams. My name is Kaden. And that was your Ricky for today. Because February is over, it doesn't mean we have to stop acknowledging black excellence. At IBOC, we believe that God can use anybody to do anything, no matter what your color is. We will always celebrate the amazing men, women, and children of the past. But it's important to understand that black history goes beyond the names that we normally hear about. Today, we would like to continue our inspiring series to recognize black excellence in our own church family. Periodically, we are going to highlight our brothers and sisters who are making a difference for Christ and making a difference in our community. One of our very own members has been studying hard in law school while serving with passion at IBOC. And this is his story. This is Brother Reggie Johnson. He's a faithful servant with the maintenance team at the University of Dreams. He's also a dedicated usher at the Inspiring Body of Christ Church. And just last Saturday, he graduated from the University of North Texas at Dallas School of Law. But please, don't allow these images to fool you. There's an incredible process that came before this promise. Hey family, my name is Brother Reggie Johnson. I'm a proud member of the Inspiring Body of Christ Church. I've been here since 2006. I recently graduated from law school from the UNT Dallas College of Law. Um, why did I choose to go to law school? I don't say I chose it. I, I say I chose to submit to the will of God. Uh, I think God just had a calling. Well, I'm pretty sure God had a calling on me to go to law school. So about February of 2017, um, it was one Saturday morning, I uh, woke up and I just had this this urge, like the Holy Spirit was just telling me, hey, look into going to law school. Now, mind you, I graduated with my bachelor's degree in 2005, and I had the thought in my own mind, of course, to never go back to school again. We just had a real good agreement. School stay on one side, I stay on the other side, and we're good to go. But, of course, God's plans are always a lot greater than our plans are. So, so the next day on Sunday morning, I'm praying uh, on my way to church, asking God, like, okay, well, if, if this is what you say, I need you to, to make it clear to me. So on that Sunday morning, the title of the sermon that pastor preached was, He's Calling Me. But God gave him a second chance. If you don't mind, I want you to reach over just a little bit and shake someone's hand, even if you have to grab the wrist and say, welcome to the second chance room. Okay, all right. Say, now, excuse me for a few minutes. But he's calling me. Okay, so if you don't play and talk and, and you don't jive around with them, they know now God's about to say something because 
if you going to make it the next 40 days on a promise, God said, I got some things I need you to do. And at that point, I just figured it was too big to miss. <laughs> So I couldn't deny it at that point. Um, I remember going to work. I was working at Walgreens at the time. I remember going to work and my prayer was that, okay, Lord, if this is what you're doing, if this is what you're setting up, then one, make it clear to me. Then two, you're going to have to clear the path. Within that next 10 days, Walgreens had let me go for my job. And that was the greatest thing that could have happened at that time. And I wasn't going to get myself out of there, so he had to do what was necessary to allow me to be removed from that place. So I was extremely grateful at that time. With all the preparation, I get my application in before the deadline, and I didn't get in. So the first time of me applying, I did not get into law school. And so my next prayer was like, okay, Lord, I did exactly what you told me to do. So I didn't get in. Now I've done what you told me to do. Okay, so now what else do you need me to do? And it was just instantly, it was like, apply again. Put my application in, turned around. In February, I received my acceptance letter. February was a full year from the time that I was released from Walgreens and the time that God had told me to start looking into law school. So it was just great confirmation at that point. Law school for was a challenge for me just because of the timing that it required um, the, the rigor of the courses, I wasn't concerned about that, but the timing that it, that it would take from family time, from church time, um, from being able to work just all of the above, that's where the major challenge of law school came for me. So I had to learn how to adjust on the fly really, really quickly. But my main goal was that I didn't want to put God on the back burner because he gave me instructions to do something and now I'm going to do it but now he's becoming second because I'm, I'm following his instructions. Part of following his instructions is to keep him first in the process anyway. At my school, the past two years, I was actually the, the, student, body, the student body president. Um, how a lot of people see, we call it the Student Bar Association president. Um, this is very uncommon for a first year law student to run for president. And so of course it ruffled a few feathers. And once everything was reinstated, I ended up winning the election. Um, and that was, that was just another confirmation from God. It was truly, truly a blessing just because when God sets anything up, he already sets the people in place for things to get accomplished. You just have to continue to walk in the steps that he's already ordered. And so with me being in church, it helped to create who I am today. The vision that God poured into me, um, the dreams that he's given me, those would not happen if I wasn't here at this church. Um, the men of God, oh man, it's nothing like being a servant and having a team that supports you that way. Other people that inspire me, my wife, um, just watching my wife with her own battles every day, watching her just defeat Satan every day that she gets up. So I can sit back and, and watch some of the things that she has going on and I can't make any excuses about anything, like anything at all. It's, it's a waste of time for me to make any excuses because she just continues to push. Pastor, man, pastor, I've, I've been involved in sports pretty much my entire life. Um, up until probably about seven, eight years ago, I wanna say. And I've always had a coach and pastor, since I've been in this church, pastor has become that coach that I've needed in my life. Um, I think coaches, good coaches help you achieve individual accolades, but great coaches help you become champions and produce champions and produce championships. And I just believe that pastor is, is such a great coach for me because he's helped me become a champion. Okay, so thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, pastor. Um, thank you, church family. Thank you to awesome men of God for coming in and even volunteering to just help serve as we always do on a regular basis. Um, I can't say thank you enough. I mean, more than anything, I'm just extremely grateful just for being able to, to be under such tremendous leadership to continue helping me move forward in my life, helping me move forward as a man of God, helping me move forward to this, this, this dream wouldn't even came to fruition. This dream wouldn't even come about without me being planted in the foundation that I'm planted in. So I'm extremely grateful. Uh, Pastor, you know, we love you so much. We thank you so much. And 
See y'all Sunday. Brother Reggie, we are so proud of you. Keep doing what you're doing because the best is yet to come in your life.